Hello everyone, this is a tutorial on chapter 100. The point of this tutorial is to show you the structure of chapter 100 uh, so as to aid your reading. In general, um, what happens in this chapter is the Pequod uh, of Nantucket meets this Samuel Enderby of London. Here we have um, to the Pequod, uh, Captain Ahab's ship, uh, goes on board, uh, meets or sees the Samuel Enderby of London, an English ship, and Captain Ahab goes on board and has a discussion with the captain of the Samuel Enderby, the English captain. That's the summary, and now let's just go into a quick overview of the structure of what happens. Um, from the beginning, ships ahoy has seen the white whale, so cried Ahab, once more hailing a ship showing English colors bearing down under the stern. Um, in this passage, we have a brief uh, description of the English captain. And here uh, Ahab says, have you seen the white whale? And the English captain responds by saying, see you this? And withdrawing it from the folds that had hidden it, he held up a white arm of sperm whalebone. Um, so not only has this captain seen the white whale, but this captain has also been dismembered by this whale. Ahab gets very excited by this, and he says, man my boat. And this blue line here um, uh, shows this, is, is, is a part in this chapter, is the part in this chapter where Ahab gets off of his boat um, and goes over to visit the other boat. Uh, so he gets off, um, we'll call this one here the Pequod, and he gets off and he travels over to um, the Samuel Enderby um, to have a discussion with this other captain who's seen Moby Dick. And this blue line um, uh, shows how difficult it is for him to get over and onto the other ship, considering the fact that he only has one leg. So they finally meet, and he says, Aye, aye, Hardy, let us shake bones together, an arm and a leg. And this is a pretty frightening image here. Here are two captains who have both lost limbs, shaking, um, shaking hands, essentially, um, with uh, these peg, ar peg, let peg limbs that... Uh, they both have. And he goes on, he says, well, where was last you saw him? And the captain says, to the east. And then um, Ahab um, asks him to tell, asks the Englishman to tell him the story of how he lost his arm. He says, spin me the yarn. And this reddish orange line here is captain, the English captain's um, story of how it happened, and as he's finishing up his story, he says, well, oh, he brings over the surgeon of uh, his boat, and he says, now, Bunger Boy, spin your part of the yarn. And this pink line um, is uh, the surgeon's part of the story. Basically, the surgeon had to deal with the captain after the captain got his arm bitten off. Um, he had to deal with him like a doctor. And um, the, they, have this, they, they end up having this playful exchange where the captain butts in and he says, oh yeah, the surgeon was drinking hot rum toddies with me every night till he couldn't see to put on the bandages and sending me to bed half seas over about three o'clock in the morning. And he's kind of poking fun at the surgeon because the surgeon doesn't drink, the surgeon is a Puritan, and they have this sort of funny exchange where they're almost sort of flirting back and forth. And after a while, Ahab gets frustrated and he says, okay now, but what became of the white whale? And he asks if he saw him again after this terrible exchange. And um, the, whale, uh, the captain of the English ship says, oh, well, I've seen him twice. And Ahab is sort of shocked, and he says, well, why didn't you, you could not go down, and, but you could not fasten? Um, and so he's asking this English captain, well, why didn't you go after him? And the captain says, uh, didn't want to try to. Ain't one limb enough? What should I do without this other arm? And I'm thinking Moby Dick doesn't bite so much as he swallows. 
And then we have this inter interruption here, which is actually sort of important, where the surgeon says, oh, well, actually, the surgeon is sort of the scientist on board. He says, well, actually, um, uh, the whale actually can barely swallow the limb. Um, he definitely doesn't eat it. And when he goes to do that, he's actually not, um, there's no malice in it. Um, and it's actually his awkwardness. He's only trying to scare away uh, though his attackers. Um, this, of course, uh, just pause here, um, is, is a different opinion from what Ahab has about um, Moby Dick's attack on him. Remember, uh, Ahab believes that Moby Dick is evil and means to do harm. And, um, and then um, the, the English captain says, yeah, no more white whales for me. Um, he's best let alone. Don't you think so, captain? And he glances over at Ahab's ivory leg. And uh, here um, Ahab says, he is, but he will still be hunted for all that. And um, he's, a, we can see Ahab, he gets very frustrated here because here are these jolly Englishmen um, who have a completely different um, response to Moby Dick than Ahab had. Um, and so much so that the surgeon um, says, Bless my soul and curse the foul fiends, cried Bunger, stoopingly walking around Ahab, and like a dog strangely s snuffing this, uh, sniffing. And he says, This man's blood, bring the, te bring the thermometer. And he can tell that Ahab is getting really furious um, and heating up. And when he goes to try and take Ahab's temperature, Ahab dashes him against the bulwarks or throws him uh, to the side of the boat. Um, and then he storms off and has, uh, he leaves the Samuel Enderby, the English ship, uh, his, his um, main mate, Fidala. He has him lower him down into the smaller boat. Um, and go back to uh, um, his ship, the Pequot. Um, and as you can, he stands upright till alongside of the Pequot, and he does this to show his leadership and so show that even though um, the the seas are wild and stormy, he can still stand um, and guide his ship, even though he only has one leg. Um, so my question for you is, um, what does this interaction reveal about Ahab? And that's all.